Arsenal have a big problem coming. They have got a big problem on their hands and specifically Arteta. And I'll explain to you what that is right now. They've just drawn 2-2 in the quarterfinal first leg against Bayern Munich. Hold that four. We move forward to Sunday, 4.30, Arsenal versus Aston Villa in a massive game that could decide their title fate. Arsenal, in my opinion, can't afford to make any big changes to this game. They may rotate a couple of players, but they can't make drastic changes to rest players for that Bayern Munich game. On the other hand, Bayern Munich play Saturday. They're very blessed to, well, it's not really blessed. They've been absolutely horrendous this season. And because of that, they have got a game on Saturday, 2.30 against Cologne. Now, Bayern will probably rest majority of their 11 that played, the likes of Sane, Nabry, and probably Kane will be rested. And then Arsenal cannot do that. They are in big, big trouble, in my opinion. I think Arsenal could probably get away of resting one, maybe two players. But their entire back line's got to play. Declan Rice has got to play. Odegaard's got to play. And Unai Emery has got this weird trait when it comes to being the underdog, when it comes to turning up in big, big matches this season. For instance, he's already beaten Spurs, Arsenal and City. Two of those games at home, one away. But Arsenal have to take this game so seriously. I know they're probably going to have one eye on, on the Bayern Munich game next Wednesday, but Aston Villa are no mugs. They're, they're fifth in the Premier League for a reason. They also are playing on Thursday. The likelihood is they will put two or three goals past Lille uh, in the next round of the Conference League. But I think this is going to be a potential banana skin for Arsenal. We're really going to see what they're made of now because, yes, they showed fight, they showed character, they showed grit and determination to get in that game, to get back in that game against Bayern Munich. But now you're going to the Allianz Arena. And I don't see how Arteta can really, you know, I don't think Saka gets a rest this weekend. I think he has to play. You know, he he, he looked uncomfortable at the end after he got clattered by Neuer. And yes, some people may say that's a penalty. Some people may say it's not. That probably will be going on until the latter stages of this week. But when I look at Arsenal's depth options, when I look at does Reese Nelson come in, does Partey come in against against Aston Villa at the weekend? Do Aston Villa make any changes? I look at Arsenal's bench against Bayern Munich. The likes of Partey, Jesus, Trossard, Zinchenko, Smith Rowe, Fabio Vieira. I imagine a few of those will get the start against Aston Villa. I think Partey when he come on against Bayern Munich was absolutely horrendous. By the way. He gave the ball away time and time and time again. Did not look, you know, comfortable. Looked a bit rusty, a bit unfit. I think he may start against Aston Villa to try and, you know, get his match form back, build up a bit of business. But can Arsenal really afford in this title race to not be playing Declan Rice, to not be playing Saka or Martinelli or, in fact, Odegaard? It's a real, real problem. Bayern Munich will come in fresh as a daisy next Wednesday against Arsenal. And this genuinely could be a mental, I guess you could say, a mental block for Arteta. And we know in the past, when things haven't gone to plan, it's affected this Arsenal team. Last year, when they had a bit of a wobble, they dropped points against Southampton and West Ham. You know, if they were to go out to the Champions League to Bayern Munich, you know, you look at their games afterwards, they've got Wolves, Chelsea and then Spurs. But on the flip side... If they beat Aston Villa, I do think they go to Bayern Munich and get a result. The ideal situation for Arsenal would be to go to Aston Villa at the Emirates on Sunday and be a couple of goals up by half time. But I don't think that's going to happen. I think Unai Emery is going to set up his team perfectly for the way that Arsenal play. If you saw the way Bayern Munich played um, in the Champions League game against Arsenal, they were tactically brilliant and set up for the counter-attack. There was gaps in behind in Arsenal's defence that we haven't seen this season because they've been so good. I think Aston Villa probably will do the same with Diaby, Bailey and Watkins and co. Also, Aston Villa probably will make changes as well because of their Thursday night game. But this is going to be a big problem. The way Arsenal were exposed against Bayern Munich, the likes of Sane's attacking runs, 
how strong defensively Goretzka was. I think that's a problem. Have they potentially figured Arsenal out? I don't necessarily think so. I just think the way Thomas Tuchel set them up, he was tactically spot on. This could potentially be a headache for Mikel Arteta's men this Sunday. I really do. And if things don't go to plan, if they do drop points this game, you can kiss goodbye to that title race because they have got to win every single game between now and the end of the season in the Premier League and in the Champions League if they want to win that. And they've still got tough games. still got to play three of the big six boys, you know. So I'm looking at it. It's, it's going to be fascinating this Sunday. It, it really is. Do the likes of Rena? I mean, can you trust Reese Nelson over Saka? Can you trust Smith Rowe over Odegaard? I mean, let's be honest. They're not blessed with quality. You look at Bayern Munich today, you know, they, they flexed their muscles in the final fur. We saw how, how, how great Harry Kane was playing the ball down the flanks. We saw, you know, Serge Nabry causing problems, how strong uh, Lemma was and Goretzka. If Aston Villa kind of emulate that to a degree with the likes of Douglas Louise, John McGinn, Ollie Watkins, Bailey and co, it's going to be a big problem for Arsenal. But I'm looking at it throughout the remainder of the season. Arsenal have really got to show what they're made of now in the next five days. In the next five to seven days, we're going to really see if Arsenal have got the mentality and the character to go and beat Aston Villa and beat Bayern Munich in their backyard. We've seen how tough it is to win at Bayern Munich. You know, Chelsea did it in the final. DDA Drogba steps up. Arsenal needs someone like that who's got the game by the scruff of the neck, who's got that leadership, who's got that killer ball in them. We're going to need to see that next week and Sunday for me is just as big a game because you look at who look at Manchester City they've got Luton you look at Liverpool they've got Crystal Palace both teams you know probably going to go in and get three points Arsenal are the last team to play the pressure is going to be on and they have to bounce back now it's a, it's a minor I don't want to say it's a setback drawing to Bayern Munich but Arsenal were in my opinion big big favourites this is a Bayern Munich team. Of course, it's still Bayern Munich, but it's not the Bayern Munich we've seen with the likes of Schweinsteiger, Frank Rubery, Robin and Lahm. It's a, it's a new Bayern Munich with holes in their team, you know. No Thomas Muller, he didn't, he didn't get a game tonight. You know, Bayern Munich looked horrendous defensively. The likes of Eric Dyer back there. They're out of a title race. But we're going to see what they're made of. Do they have what it takes? you got to get past Aston Villa, and then we're going to see if they have the character, will, determination, and the mentality to not only beat Aston Villa, but to go to the very end of this title race and to go to the Allianz Arena and beat one of the biggest clubs in Europe. You're talking one of the juggernauts of world football. Like it's, a, it's going to be a mouth-watering five or six day, uh, five or six days for Arsenal. In terms of Manchester City as well, they've got. Uh, they've, they've got it, in my opinion, probably the easiest. They can rest five or six players against Luton quite easily because the depth they've got and the quality in depth. And then they go against Real Madrid. And you look at Liverpool as well. Liverpool have got a relatively comfortable tie against Atalanta. And then they're at home again against Crystal Palace. And both teams play before Arsenal do. Like, I'm going to be honest. I'm going to think about this logically. If Arsenal lose to Aston Villa, I don't think they're going to beat Bayern Munich. If Arsenal draw against Aston Villa, I still don't think they're going to beat Bayern Munich. Arteta has been shown before and he's shown many times that he's very, it's very reactional. It's very raw emotion. We're going to have to see that now. You know, I thought tactically against Bayern Munich in the second half, he kind of let the game drift by a little bit. Bayern Munich were just happy to sit in and counter-attack. He did make the right substitutions, though, bringing on the likes of Trossard. I do think he should have brought on Partey early and maybe brought on Tommy Asu. You know, Zinchenko is not the best 1v1 defensively. He's very good at going forward. And when he when he got into the midfield, with he, when he inverted, it gave the likes of Declan Rice to move forward more. In the next two games, though, he has got to get his selection perfect. And the game management's going to be massive against Aston Villa and Bayern Munich. In my opinion, this is probably the biggest five to seven days of the season for Mikel Arteta. If they go out to this Bayern Munich team, it is a little bit of a setback. But people will say it's their first year back in the Champions League. I get that. But it's not the Bayern Munich we know. It is still Bayern Munich, but it's not. And this is an Arsenal team that lots of people definitely in England fear. We've seen how strong they are defensively. They need to show that now 
in the next five to seven days. And if they do, they'll beat Bayern Munich and Villa. But I've just got this feeling that a big problem's coming. You know, the way Saka looked at the end, is he limping off? Is he holding his hamstring? I don't know. Only time will tell. Make sure you go down, smash that like button and subscribe. And I will see you all soon. Thank you all for watching. I am out.